what we learned the hard way is that everybody says, I want all my data. And we started building tools years ago and said, here you go. We built whole database structures, everything. Here, here's all your data. And we gave it to them, and they got so pissed off. They're like, what the F do I do with all this data? Like, well, that's what you asked for. Well, I didn't really want it all. I, you know, well, what did you want? Well, I wanted it all calculated. Like, well, maybe we'll do something along those lines. Anyway, at the end of the day, we realized that that the storage industry doesn't have the infrastructure within their companies and all of the engineers and all of the professional services to consume the data in how they really, the why, right? Like, that's what I'm always about. Why do you want it? Well, we, we, we know why. We just thought that they would get there on their own. They couldn't. So we've been building this data warehouse. It completes in March, into March, beginning of April, but it's 80% complete, 70% complete. Less? <laughs> yeah, it's not 100 percent, but it's getting pretty close, and you'll and you'll see that. And and we call it tenant warehouse. And anyway, Gondar, tell us about tenant warehouse. Okay, so so we have been working on this for the past couple of months. It's still in its development phase, but a couple of years really. But <laughs> in the the version that you're in, <laughs> yeah. But before I get into what what is a tenant warehouse, I think the why is an important question here. Uh, so if you're a Hummingbird customer right now, you have around 80 to 90 reports which you can download into a PDF and Excel version and make your business decisions off it. But we do realize that not every customer is, the, uh, each one of them is going to have a different vision and different strategies as to how they want to run their own business. And those 80 to 90 reports are not going to be sufficient for you. You want to look at your data into different angles and different dimensions and make sense out of it. And that was that was the origin story of Tenant Warehouse, actually. And to start with, what is Tenant Warehouse? It's considered that as a centralized repository that stores your operational data. And it is designed in a, such a way where you can carry out your business intelligence activities, be it for reporting, be it for data analytics, or any business decisions you want to you wanna make out of it. But a challenge here is to have a dedicated team which will make sense out of this data. Because when we talk about this data warehouse, it's it's made up of facts and dimension tables. And there's going to be like 20 to 30 dimensions and fact tables. To give an example of what fact table is, it's, it's, a, qual it's, it's, it's a table which holds your quantitative information. So it's going to be a space table or a revenue table or payments table. So payments like that would be called as a fact table and a dimension table is going to be a table which holds your descriptive information. So be it tenant information or location or demographic information. And all these tables are going to be linked to each other. And that shape is going to resemble like a star. And they call it a star schema in database language. And when you have a 100-foot view of this entire thing, it's going to be it's going to look like a spider web where each table is connected with each other. And you just have to make sense out of it. And that, that's one of the challenges here. And this is where people just about kill this, is when we gave them these database structures and said, here you go, you got all your data. And they were like, really? Like, now what do I do? I you know, go to work for Microsoft. Um, and so after your break, you're going to see how, how this comes to life and what it means to you, because you don't really give a damn about this thing. Yeah. What you're going to care about is, is, is why, why do you want this and what value does it have to you? Like like Lance mentioned, uh, personally for me, while I was working on this tenant data warehouse, uh, I realized a couple of things. Uh, that it, not every customer of ours is going to have uh, the capacity or a team to build BI tools out of this entire data warehouse. And that's when we, we thought about it, and that's, where, well, that's what we want to introduce you to, is tenant warehouse and business intelligence. So not only the data warehouse, we're also going to offer you the BI package with this. And now where you'll find this BI package, we have, we have positioned in a, in a location where you spend most of your time. Right. And, and that's I, in Hummingbird. I want to I remind everybody what I said earlier, and, and I forgot to reiterate it. Up to the break, everything you saw, you can, you can have tonight. This is in UAT, so it is about to be yours, but it has not been delivered, but it is imminent. It will be in your hands quickly, but 
It is not there today. Sorry. Sa ahead. Salmon Hummingbird right now. This is my spaces, space of view that you see here. If you go to Tools section, there's going to be a Business Intelligence tool. And if you hit on it, it's going to have your dashboard in front of you. And we're building two dashboards. Right now, we're experimenting with the store local dashboard, but we are at the same time building what we're calling the tenant dashboard that will have this functionality just for demo purposes. This is the store local dashboard. Now, the data that you see in there is live and real. That is not, that is not UAT or dev data. There are 15,000 active tenants and 35 properties, about 2.7, 2.8 million rented and 3.4 total, right? Yeah. So this is live data. If we query this data or do things through this exercise, we're hitting a, a, a real storage company um, database. Yeah, and we are, we're going to keep on building on this. So you see there are eight tabs at the bottom there. There's summary, there's occupancy, move-ins and move-outs, and all kind of stuff. So summary page is where we thought we would keep all our important KPIs that we think are important for a, for a business owner to look at. And there's going to be other tabs which are going to follow there. I'm going to go to a Power BI workspace. So this thing that you see here is, is Microsoft Power BI BI tool. And we're using that, we're leveraging that for our, for our demo purpose. Each customer will get their own workspace. So we will make sure there's data security, there's data integrity there. And I'm just going to go full screen here. And and the, the reason he's doing this is just to maximize the space you have to, to see this stuff. This will all play if you have permission. If you have a user seat in Power BI, which you probably, all your managers probably wouldn't have that, but yeah. certain certain people within your company would, it would have single sign-on. So you would log in as your DM or owner or whatever, and you would have that functionality right within within Hummingbird, as well as mobile. This this is this is fully mobile, fully customizable mobile, and we're at the same time experimenting with that to make it as, as easy as possible. Yeah, and this is not it. You're also gonna get the ability to add more stuff to it. So if you don't like any of this stuff, you can remove that and add, add it yourself. So this is the summary dashboard here. Like Lance mentioned, this is real data here. This has, it, it's 82, the entire portfolio is 82% occupied, 3.5 million rentable square feet. But what, is, what you see here is some of the interesting insights, like rental activity by day of the week. Saturday is, is, has the most number of activity, which is, which is, which is understandable, but if you see, there are more on Tuesdays. A solution for that, which Lance mentioned, is just close the store on Tuesdays. <laughs> but yeah, yeah th these are important things which you can get out of this. At the bottom here is something which we have, we call it as lead conversion rate. That's going to tell you how, many, how much of your leads are getting converted. Nikki mentioned that our end goal for this product is to have all the GA4 data and all the data uh, flowing through different, coming from different sources, we are going to make sure that they flow in into data, tenant data warehouse and have it displayed in, the, in this BI tool here. And how easy is it to dice the information? Um, like we're year to date, kind of worthless info. Yeah. You know, let's let's look at. So, yeah, what you have up there, these are called as slicers or filters, and you will be able to change your views or filter views based on these slices. If you want to do last year, if you want to do month to date, and things like that. So also, if you want to also look at the properties, if you want to have get the numbers for a specific property, you can do that. Right here, you'll see that we have masked the name of the properties just for to make sure we don't expose the. Yeah, this is data. again, it's real data, so we have hidden names of properties. So you can basically play with it and you know understand more of your business on property level or entire portfolio level. There's also more more to this filter stuff. You can group it by state, by city. Now, if you want to just look at California, you can do that too. And we are going to keep on uh, adding more stuff to it. So this will be not the end of it. So there's no configuration on our end. So nope. Is this, this, yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, well, it will be probably better by the time you get it. This is where we're at today, but that's exactly right. You will open up your screen and you will have this. If you want to take it and expand on it, if you have the skill set to do that, you can. If you know, there's all there's a million consultants out there that'll do things, but you would have what we would ship would be in my opinion, better than what any REIT has right out of the box that you'd have at your fingertips. And you'd, yeah, well, it's going to get really interesting because it would just scratch on the surface here. And that's what we're doing right now. We're talking to customers. We are trying to get more insights from them as to what measure you want to see on this BI dashboard. So this is month-to-date occupancy trend. I was, in, I was in public storage, and they use this last 40 days and last 90 days a lot. They want to see what's causing those drops in, in, in this occupancy. So you can do that too. Trailing 12 months and trailing, trailing 24 months is a good insight to you want to see how your portfolio has fared in the last two years. This, this, there may be tools in here too, like I was talking with Neil earlier. I think all you know, Neil Gussis, right? Like he's an icon for mortgage brokerage yeah, in the industry. Right yeah. Um, you know, the lending in the community is really tightened up, right? It's a lot, it's a lot trickier to communicate with lenders today. Having tools like this to be able to show them what's going on with your business could be very powerful. You could, re- you could really drill into elements as opposed to them looking at a rent roll and a worthless occupancy statistics report. And here's an interesting chart here at the bottom, bottom left. Yeah. Property edge occupancy. So there are properties which started in the last one year, which, is, which are the ones in green. The other, the other ones are properties which were there for which started from like last two years to three years, and then three years or more. If you see closely, there's a drop in the properties which have been with us for more than three years. You see the drop here. So, and what does that tell you? It's, it's it, it implies that the prop, uh, the owners were the managers who are running these properties. They're either getting complacent or. They're not doing their job correctly. Yeah, this is, we won't call out the, the, the who owns this data here, but but if I were looking at this from a leadership perspective, I'd go, okay, guys, we sort of set it and forget it here on our old school properties because we all do that, right? That thing's run great for freaking five, ten years, and let's go work on the new stuff, and we forget to give the love to those other properties, and then look at that, right? Or, or we ran rates up so heavy for two years that yeah. we had some could be on it could be uh, on the on the existing properties but with with a tool like this a you get the question and b you get the answer right that's that's what's so powerful here is the insights into into your into your property and and we're going to make this so affordable i'd argue that you got one big store you probably would want this you know The next thing we have here is move-ins and move-outs. <coughs> it's, it's, it follows a similar trend. It's on top, you'll have a trend line which is going to tell you for, for last year or for the last two years, how was, how was the trend for your move-ins and move-outs? Again, it's, it's going to be it's the entire, we are trying to make sure that the entire dashboard is consistent so it has the same filters and everything. So it's become easy for you guys to use it. Transfers here, the one on the left, bottom left, is an interesting too. Like yeah. Property N has the most number of transfers in 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 this entire month or the last month. So yeah. that's that's well, an interesting. Why, why would that happen? You have outliers that have a bunch of transfers. What's causing that? You know, are they are they are we transferring up or down? Right, like that would be the next question I'd want to know in this. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. Could could be right? Yeah. Yeah, it could, it, well, but they have the same online platform through this whole thing, so they're all they're all given the same set of tools there. Because yeah, if I had different platforms, I'd definitely be looking at that. Yeah, maybe may, may, maybe maybe that store is remote managed and people do dumber stuff. They show up with a semi for a five by five. You know who knows. And it's, it's a similar thing for revenue. What we also have here is, this is an interesting too, like revenue by services. It's going to tell you which insurance plan of your is getting sold the most and which one, which, which, one, which of the ones are, you know, not getting enough attention. 
there's revenue by payment type so you know for a fact that a lot a lot of your customers are on auto pay but there are some of them which are not on auto pay so there's work to do there and this this here what we're doing right now i mean we're literally adjusting some of this stuff last night as we're as we're learning what we can do with the current set of data we have and that data we keep talking about that end of March, beginning of April. That's when the entire database is mapped to this. So everything we have. Then those other two platforms that are working on data, they're coming in as well. That'll expand out more yeah. to to this. And then those attribution numbers and things that, that we all want to get to become very, very real, down to the penny. Right? Yeah, and like I said, we are working on it to make it very user-friendly. So each of this chart is going to have a tooltip which is going to tell you what it means, what's the, what's the what's what's the purpose of that chart is. Seeds is an important thing too. Like this has been probably the most vital information you can get out from your from your from your reports. Like leads by devices is an interesting one, which we were talking the other day. Like Lance the other day search did a Google search for the probably which, which phone has the most market, and it was iPhone by 60%. Yeah, 58%, and it just recently, Android had, globally, Android has the big market share, but in the U.S., yeah. they were the majority up until recently. Now, now iOS has 58% of the market share in America, but they're doing, what, double the rentals at our space? It's not a who cares situation. That's like, you're going to start prioritizing, you know, payment methodologies to make it easier to do business with you. You're going to be looking at Apple Pay first, right? I mean, that's the type of data that you can start to gleam, right? And and get realize the importance of three and a half inches, right? When people are trying to make those decisions, like you 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 would you would build your your business to the market, right? So if you opened up a new storage facility or you found a new piece of land, you'd be like, okay, what's the space mix going to be? What's this going to look like? Is it going to be a class A? Is it going to be multi-level? Is it going to be climate control? What are the features, right? You're going to do all that as a professional real estate person as we all are in here. You would now need to be a professional real estate person on that screen. You've got to, you've got to pay attention to that because that's where your customer is. You don't have to. Sorry, do whatever you want. But I would recommend you, you become very astute in that. Now now we're going to start giving the data. And it's interesting, right? When you get to desktop, it flip-flops, which makes a little bit sense, right? Not, yeah. I don't know how many people in here. How many people in here have a PC? How many people have a Mac? Oh, see, it's actually, yeah. we're, we're, we must be really rich or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and once we start consuming GA4 data, this is this is gonna light up. This is gonna be very oh yeah, valuable. yeah. When the GA4 stuff starts pumping in here, we we have a lot of information already because we're already collecting a bunch of it. But when we get that in, this gets really rich. You know, it's really interesting, right? They're converting more sometimes than they're getting leads, which means you know yeah. your 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 staff is doing a good job in these areas, right? Because they're 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 pounding the the systems and the tools. To, to get those to get those customers. Um, your your channels, right? You can see in here your platform sources. By the way, I, this one blew my mind here, right? Like this this customer is using XPS. Looks to me like they're they're getting a return on that. I mean that's a that's a that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good number of uh, leads happening, and, and and or they're answering the phone when when the staff isn't. So, you know, um, you wonder if you should use a third party for your particular company. I guess it depends on how you have your company built and how it's staffed. In this in this case, that's very that's very powerful to me if I'm an operator. There's another interesting. Uh, dashboard that we have here is we call it as year over year and this is basically going to tell you it's going to help you understand how you are faring or how, what are your numbers compared to last year's numbers so the tables that you see there 
It's going to tell you the year-to-date number. That's what the first column tells you. But the next column, which is same period last year, it's going to compare the same same time frame as of this year. It's going to give you the numbers. So for move-ins or move-outs, you can see that your move-ins have been more than your move-outs compared to last year. And this this is interesting for leads and everything. Yep, you have had more number of leads this year compared to last year, and that tells you that your marketing team is doing a good job there. And at the bottom that you see here is, is, is the number of percentage that we wanted to make sure that we cover every ground of this, like your conversion rate, your enrollment in auto pay, and stuff like that. On the left that you see here, these are the occupancy chart and net movement chart. We are trying to see or probably make it look like a horse race for, for all the last four years and trying to see how, they're comp how, how they fare when they are stacked against each other. The another one is an interesting one. If you call this as leaderboard, and Lance is pretty huge on this because this is actually going to tell you your losers and winners in your entire portfolio. Yeah, if, if you have a portfolio, I'd say if you have like four or more stores, it starts getting interesting. Why why are some stores performing better in certain metrics? Because we, we, all, we all know that sometimes it's market, sometimes it's location, a lot of times it's management. Yeah, you'll see it real quick in this graph. Yeah, you want to identify your bad apples. Auto pay enrollment en enrollment is another good one. You need to understand which property or which property manager is doing a great job of making sure that all the customers are are enrolled in auto pay. Like I, I want to over I, I want to overlay our reviews with this data. Is there a correlation between your facilities that have higher average reviews than lower reviews? My guess is there is, but again, never been able to prove it. We'll be able to do that. Yeah. And now tenant turnover. So properties, property P and property Z has the most number of tenant turnover. So it's definitely worth looking at it's what's happening as this property. Same for delinquent tenants. Property has the most number of delinquent tenants, so you want to definitely want to look at what call up the property manager and see what's happening there. And we want, we we plan to expand on this. We it's not it's it's not just eight graphs here. We we want to cover other aspects to this. So we are we are hoping we'll add more important measures here and stack them with property so that you can and, have your and, and we're hoping that you guys will participate in 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 this because you know we're kind of in a vacuum at a certain point like. We only know so much, and you know it's it's ideas that you bring forward yeah. that sometimes makes us look a different different direction. Yeah, hundred percent. The most like some of these measures we have been talking with customers. Platinum have been very helpful. They have been telling us about these new measures, and we are we are listening to them. We are trying to put it out in these dashboards. So yeah, your your feedback would be valuable when it comes to designing stuff like this. Yeah, that's that's um, with what what we would want to do eventually is have participatory anonymized data, you know, and um, we're we're doing all of our due diligence on that and our legalities of it and and, and you know and a whole bunch of stuff and what maybe we should share or not share right like there are certain there are certain things we're going to be careful of right there's been some pretty big lawsuits lately that we're cognizant of with with prop tech companies. Real pages, and I think you already both got hammered recently. So, you know, we're we're being we're being cautious there, but absolutely. I mean, that's something Travis has been working on for a long time, and part of the relationship we have with Moody's um, to to make data more accessible. The final two things here. So, there's there's so much talk about AI, and we definitely want don't want to be left behind. So we have we tried to dabble into AI a bit here. So we call this as tenant chatbot, and it's basically gonna it's basically gonna, it's basically gonna answer your questions. So if you wanna know what were your movements last week or what were your transfers last month, it's just gonna it's it's think of that as a Q and A thing. And so if I wanna see my transfers for last week, I can probably just type it out. Well, that didn't work. 
yeah, this, this is one of the things with AI that you have to make sure your words are right. You have to train it. Or maybe I can do transfers by property. That uh, it's going to give you a graph which is going to give you a list of properties and their transfers. So it's based on how you ask questions and how, inf um, how much information the AI thing collects. And what are some of the questions that are already in, in there? Yeah, so we have been playing around with this. We have been training this chatbot. We've already marked a couple of questions here, like movements in last week, occupancy for today. So th what's powerful about this is is AI is going to be able to start looking into a lot of information with, within your business. And as as this grows and, and the nomenclature gets understood by the chatbot, you're, you're going to be able to really, you're going to have a question on some of this stuff and you're going to be able to go right into chat and ask that question and there's a very high likelihood that you're going to get, you know, either the answer or you're going to get the direction to go get the answer as opposed to what we would have been doing previously of guessing a lot and, you know, running around and making tons of phone calls. This is, this is, this is pretty powerful. And this is included too within that seat that you have. It's a whole it's a whole ten dollars more to yeah. have AI tools by user. by user. Yeah, yeah, and that's that, and it's and it's the reason it's the reason we've sort of dove into Power BI. We, we really feel like they're trying to buy the market and crush everybody um, because th this the level of what's here, you know, would have been. And, uh, well, it was unobtainable just a few years ago, and it was incredibly expensive. And the the price has just come down. I mean, they're they're clearly they're they're clearly aimed at owning the market. And so, you know, there's one there's one um, very consistent theme to you guys. You're cheap. <laughs> and this is the biggest this is the biggest player out there, right? With owning the biggest AI piece, so we think it's we think it's the sandbox for us to play in from a tech perspective. That doesn't mean that you can't take Tableau or ClickSense. You can take anything you want and go wire it to the tenant warehouse and do all this, right? Yeah. W what we're doing is we're going to provide it for you with Power BI, and if that works for you, great. If it doesn't, then you know go get go go get another tool and, and configure it however you want. But you have that flexibility. So Oh yeah. Yeah you're gonna need a, you're gonna need a you're gonna need a staff. Yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. If 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 you wanna if you wanna put those players on uh, you know in your company, the sky's the limit, right? Feel free to do stuff we haven't thought about. Yep. Um and then there's another component to this that we're just now exper ex experimenting with. Yeah, it's, it's too young. It's forecasting and predictive analysis. And we haven't reached to a point because there's not enough data. We would want to we want to predict and forecast your revenues and, and all of this stuff. So what you see on the graph there is we are trying to predict your net movements for, for the next entire year and the same with the revenue. So it's, it's not 100%, but that's... That's what that's where we are right now with this. And there's probably some other data sets that we can plug into this. Um, there's a, well, not some. There's tons of data sets we could plug into this. I'd be very curious to have interest rates plugged into this and how it, it pushes these numbers around. You know, um, you know, moves, house sales, you know, house pricing. Like, there, there's a lot of data out there that we can start layering into this and 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 make other. Other decisions, you know, seasonality, obviously. Yeah, and at the bottom there, they call it as decomposition tree. It's going to give you a breakdown of your revenue based on product type or properties and and so on. So that's another that's another thing which we are refining it. We want to make sure that we include all aspects to it, and there's a good breakdown of your entire revenue number. So right now what you see on the screen is this is your total revenue. This much of it goes to rent. This much of the rent is being covered by properties which started from 12 months to 24 months. Property 
is giving you this much revenue and this is the space category. Drive through is the space category in property E, which is giving you this much revenue. So this, this is just a sneak peek of what we are getting into when it comes to forecasting and predictive analysis. Right. Now we didn't we did we we did not build this graph, right? Like we asked we asked for this information, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So yeah. on, on the on the chat board you can actually type it down like which graph you want to have it displayed. So you can type it down as a bar graph or a decomposition tree and things like that. But you have to be specific to the chat bot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what the power of AI and and tools like this, this is where it's going, where it, it will graph out and create, you know, results like this for us. This is super early on, you know. I bet next year at this time, we're probably going to, we're going to be way deeper in that sandbox. So it should be pretty fun. But this is, this is tenant warehouse now. Tenant warehouse will come with a seat in this space. And if you want to add in more seats, add in as many as you want, right? It's they're 20 bucks a seat. Give them to your senior leadership or ownership, whoever you want to give them to at your company. And we will have it figured out so that it's single sign-on, so that all you do is jump on to to Hummingbird, and you have this data right right in your you know right right in your face. Also, it is mobile, right? And it's what's interesting is it's it's not just a responsive mobile. It's actually a completely customizable mobile experience. So our creative teams have been already playing with this, but we'll get a lot of, this will be another thing we'll get a lot of feedback on, right? Yeah. You know, I'm the guy that at 4.30 in the morning is looking at my phone, and if I want to see the important things about my, my property or properties, I, I, can, I can do it right here, you know, before I even get out of bed. And yeah. you keep that keep keep that link on your phone and you know just open it anytime. Don't even have to go into Hummingbird. So that's that's pretty cool. Sorry, did you say it was $10? It's twenty. It's twenty. Uh, they have two products. It's there's a ten dollar product and a, and a twenty dollar product yeah. because. <laughs> well, that's well. <laughs> Thank well, you, Rob. No, hold, uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'll keep Brad from killing us. The, the, I, what, I'm, what I'm referring to is, is, the, is the Microsoft Power, Power BI, right? I'm not talking about tenant. Tenant warehouse is, there's a, there's a price for tenant warehouse, but it's also very affordable. But the seats at Microsoft, you, you guys, yeah. I'll protect you. <laughs> Um, all right. Thank you, Gandhar. Like, yeah, thank you so much. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot of years. Yeah, I told you. I told you his after break would be better than his before break. <laughs>